There's something special about nostalgia. It can take you back to a different time and place, and evoke feelings of warmth and familiarity. And in a world where everything seems to be going on all at once, it's perhaps a feeling we all need. Film emulation is the filmmaker's nostalgia. Beyond the technicalities, color theory, grain, halation, bloom, film emulation, at its core, adds feeling. When done right, it's subtle, yet the feeling is unmistakably there. There are plenty of film emulation tools out there, ranging from simple LUTs all the way to full-blown plugins. I managed to get my hands on two of them, Dehancer and Filmbox, so I can test them out and compare. Which is the best advanced film emulation software, and is it worth the price? Firstly, who are these tools for? With their hefty price tags, they're definitely more for the advanced users. And to be honest, a hobbyist like myself probably wouldn't consider it unless it was given for free, like to make this video. However, Filmbox does have a free but limited version for footage up to 1080p, which is more than enough for social media. But if you're someone who color grades for a living or you're looking to do this as a full-time career, then perhaps these plugins are worth looking into. Film emulation is complicated. You have to get the colors right, get the halation to look natural, and somehow convert the most perfect image out of your technologically advanced camera to have the nostalgia driving flaws of a film camera. These tools serve to rapidly streamline the process, allowing you to consolidate the many aspects of film emulation into just a few nodes, unlike free or cheaper alternatives like CinePrint 16. If you're constantly working on commercial projects with fast turnaround times, you probably don't want to be messing around with the mountain of nodes that come with CinePrint. Although you can use either of these plugins in any way you like, what I've found to work best is having them at the very end for the look and effects separately. This allows you to make corrections to your footage and have the emulation plugin at the very end for that film look. And so, for my workflow, these two tools serve the same purpose. After I've color corrected and graded the footage, this allows me to add the final touches of film at the very end. This also means that theoretically with enough editing, you could get the two plugins to output the same exact image. So then what's the difference? In terms of similarities, both plugins allow you to quickly select the camera and color format you shot in, removing the fuss and time of selecting the right option from color space transform. They also have basic color correction features like exposure, white balance. But for any colorist, I would recommend splitting these into separate nodes anyways, as this allows for greater flexibility and also it's much more clear to understand what changes you need to make when you're making edits. However, that's where the similarities end. Dehancer and Filmbox take rather different approaches to film emulation. Dehancer, on one hand, takes a more literal approach and attempts to directly emulate specific stocks of film even photographic film. They have emulations for every film stock imaginable. On top of this, the Hanser has the ability to customize every aspect of the look, from compression to the type of print it has. Filmbox, on the other hand, takes a more liberal approach, instead opting to emulate the essence of film rather than any one specific stock. They care more about the intricacies of what makes video look like film, and streamline the most important elements into one powerful plugin. Both plugins are great at what they do, and successfully serve their purpose of adding that final film look to your color grading workflow in an efficient manner. I do this as a hobby, so to be honest, both of them look just as great, and I can't really say much more. I may be only a hobbyist filmmaker, but I am a professional user experience and strategic designer, so here's my take on both the design and the usability of these plugins. Both tools are limited from the get-go by being a built-in DaVinci Effect plugin, which means that the user interface is already limited to just this narrow sidebar. I like how Filmbox, despite the constraints of the DaVinci FX layout, really optimizes their limited space available by nesting their less-used options under the main ones to keep their plugin clean. They know that once you set settings like grain and halation once, you never really need to change it again in a project. So they hide it under advanced settings, under the film negative setting. As a result, it's out of the way, leaving room for the more important and frequently changed and used settings. Filmbox overall feels more efficient with their use of space, and it seems to be designed for efficiency in mind. On the other hand, every single option for Dehancer is out in the open, and it can feel a little bit cluttered and disorganized. If you're on a laptop like me, 
only when you collapse all the drop downs can you see all the settings without scrolling. The user experience of Dehancer could improve by nesting some of their options, taking inspiration from Filmbox. For example, Film Developer, Compression, and Expand could all go under the Film tab, and Grain, Halation, Vignette, and Gateweave can go under a new tab called Effects. This will really help declutter the plugin and make it far easier and more efficient to use. And so while Dehancer does get a similar look to Filmbox, if you're paying this much money, you would expect to get this result in the easiest way possible, which is not always the case with Dehancer. At the end, at the end, the choice between Dehancer and Filmbox is a personal preference and also depends on who you are and what you'll be using these plugins for. If you're a hobbyist filmmaker like me, you're probably better off looking at alternatives like Cineprint, which accomplishes the film look very effectively, albeit with a million nodes to wrangle with. If this is more for a personal project or a small client project where you're really looking to level up the film emulation, the answer is also great for people who want full control over everything the film look has to offer. And if you're serious about getting into color grading as a full-time career, then perhaps Dehancer or Filmbox is something that you should look into. If you're getting consistent clients and a steady flow of income, then Filmbox might be worth the price considering how much more efficient it is than Dehancer. It'll save you so much time in the long run. And if you're getting, again, if you're getting constant clients, then it's a cost that will be covered pretty quickly. It's much less effort to get the film look without worrying about film stocks or a plethora of sliders that Dehancer has. It's more expensive of course, but it would be offset by your constant client projects. The downside is that it's a subscription, paying the same price as Dehancer annually, or a one-time payment of $999. In the end, both of these tools are absolutely amazing, and if you fit the target demographic, then you should definitely consider purchasing them. Do you use any of these tools? Let me know your experience down in the comments below. And for me, I'll be using these tools until my free license runs out. Thank you so much to Dehancer and the Filmbox team for letting me review these tools and share them with you guys. And once again, have a wonderful day. Thank you. All of us have uh, periods in our lives where we, we might uh, you know, abuse certain things, but we can get through this together. Can you describe to me what happened? It all seems so distant now. I'm just trying to put the pieces back together. You mentioned this earlier, like there's some kind of disconnect. What would you say you're trying to piece back together? Well, whenever I try and remember that night, I can barely recognize her. Your friend? I guess. But also myself. Mainly myself. <laughs>